Give me the 50 cent rundown on how you ended up. Just quick? Yeah, I mean, how'd you end up being in a camp? Um, I started, grew up riding, obviously, um, desert, stuff like that. Started racing local tracks. I grew up around Carlsbad. Rode there a lot. Um, flagged for a little bit. Um, met Jim Herkman at NCY. I always bought my parts through there. and um, He offered me a job when I was 14 doing trackside support. They used to do all those local races, Golden States, all that stuff. And uh, that slowly turned into just, just you know, I had a, a mechanical background just working with my dad and stuff and then working on motorcycles. I, I enjoyed it and um, worked a trackside support deal and started working with Mike Guerra from Yamaha doing like the amateur nationals, which grew into, you know, doing, I, I did supercrosses with like Josh Tarantino and stuff like that. And uh, in 93, I was 16 and Jim actually hired me on to work for Donald Upton on their North County Yamaha Supercross team, West Coast team. So I did that for a few years. Um, still did some Yamaha trackside support stuff. Uh, eventually did some privateer stuff. Doug Parsons, Danny Smith, Josh Tarantino. In 98, I went to FMF Honda, went to work for Danny Smith. Um, after that, team ended up going away. I went to work for Brock Sellards at Factory KTM in 2000. Um, did a couple years with Brock. After he left, I worked for Langston in 2003, won an outdoor title. Um, at the end of 03, Mark Johnson from Cowie came to me and offered me a job here at Kawasaki. And uh, of course I took it. You know, I, I wasn't completely happy with the program at the time at, at KTM. It was kind of, kind of a mess. And uh, I took the job at Cowie and I've been here ever since. I worked with uh, Burner. I actually took the job not knowing who I was going to work with and, and came here and it ended up being Michael Byrne. And I worked for Burner, uh, Timmy after that, and then I worked with James and Ryan. So, six championships, seven? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> One with Stu and then four. Yeah, because uh, we crashed out of the one. Uh, four with Ryan? Okay, so Goose for a long time was like the winningest mechanic, but it seems like you've kind of taken that over. Um, you got here without MMI. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, you know, I, I, I learned a lot along the way, and uh, from I've worked with like a lot of uh, good people. You know, I've been fortunate to like, kind of you know, just watch other guys and see what they do and kind of take what I think works from that. And um, I mean, I'm still learning all the time and trying to, trying to stay ahead or on top, you know what I mean? Because as soon as you, you stop working at it, everyone's going to catch up and you lose. So, uh, I mean, you started at an early age, 14? 14, yeah. I was still in high school. I was doing, uh, I had to talk my parents into it. I was driving a box, well, when I first started, I started doing it at 14, I was still in school, and then when I was 16, I went on homeschool, and I was, had, I mean, I had to drive a box van and do the whole thing, rebuilding bikes on the road, and, uh, you know, I had uh, Jeremy Albrecht and uh, Dean Gibson and those guys, I, I ran around with those guys at the time, and uh, they kind of showed me the ropes of the road and, and, and how to do it, you know, it was, it definitely was interesting at that age. So, what do you attribute to, what do you... What do you attribute your success to? I mean, there's how many mechanics out there? I mean, you've been fortunate to end up with good riders. And that establishes a relationship and a reputation. And you just constantly upgrade that. Um, you know, I think you just have to earn the confidence in the riders, you know, for them to want to work with you, for one thing. Um, and I, I just think that the self-discipline is one of the biggest things. You know, I think there's a lot of guys that do it, but when you travel, like, you know, next week I'll travel to the race and, and you're stuck in a semi basically for two days rebuilding a bike, it's real easy, you know, no one's watching over you, so it's real easy if you wanted to, to just run the thing how it is or, you know, short, take shortcuts, but uh, I feel like I've always had that self-discipline to do the max every time, you know whether I, if I know something's good, I redo it anyway, just, just so there's not that possibility of a failure or, 
you know, something being wrong or a small crack you'll miss or a wire being cut or something like that. And I think that's, that's one of the things that I'll, some of these guys are missing these days is it's, it's just easy to, you know, put some new plastics on and, and go run it, you know. And, uh, but who knows? I mean, I, I'm not watching them, but I just feel like some of, the, some of the stuff I see go wrong with other people's bikes and stuff like that, that it's, it's simple stuff that could have been avoided. Does it have to be kind of in your personality, be meticulous and, and you know, retentive to be a stickler for stuff? Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't think it's something you can teach because there's guys that I've worked with that, you, you know, you try to teach them that, but uh, it doesn't always, they just, for some reason, they can't process it or figure out why, you know, and uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just speaking from my own experience, you know, and. I've always been a little bit anal about everything I did, and, and I know that's one thing how Goose was, you know. When I worked at FMF Honda, he was at Factory Honda, and I used to watch him all the time. I watched him like a hawk. I watched him how he did his linkages. I watched him how he did everything, and, you know, and I took some, some stuff how he did it from him, like, oh, that's a good idea, you know. Logged it and done it ever since, probably still to this day. But, uh, I mean, if you're not always looking and, and trying to figure out how to do something better, you're not going to go anywhere. Uh, <clears throat> travel is probably obviously the worst, toughest part of the job. Beyond travel, what's the most challenging part? Um, I mean, yeah, you, you nailed it. The travel is, is difficult. Um, the time changes are what's difficult. Only really when you get home on Sundays because you're so beat down and then you got a two-year-old ready to play and your wife wants to go here and they want to go to Disneyland and you're just beat down. But uh, the schedule is, is tough lately. I mean, 17 Supercrosses, 12 Outdoors, sometimes Motocross of Nations, Monster Cup. There, there's not a lot of break. And uh, for me, I, I, I leave on Wednesdays and come back on Sundays. So I'm, I'm spending, you know, four and a half days away, more time gone than, than home. And that's the hard part. Okay. Uh, anytime Stu's struggling, he still always references the perfect season. Why am I undefeated? Why am I undefeated? <clears throat> undefeated season has to feel just as good to you as a tuner. Uh, for sure. I mean, at the time, I, I had only known, you know, Goose doing the undefeated season. And uh, when we went into 08, when I was working with James, uh, you know, he was coming off of knee surgery. And it had only been like three and a half months or something. And uh, we knew if we can get through the first race with, with a decent result, it was going to be good. And he, and he came out and he won. So, of course, there was talk right away. And um, that was, it was a good summer. I mean, I can't lie. I think we whole shotted 12 of the 24 motos. And I think he was second or third on all the other starts. And uh, we led a lot of laps. I know that. He, um, I think he, that was one of, the, one of the records he was trying to beat. Because I know there's a lap count of how many laps Ricky led. And I know he beat it by a lot but uh no i mean it was it was a good summer working with james how, uh, how difficult is it to build the working slash friendship relationship with the riders like when you start with ryan he's really by a kid and now he's <laughs> molded him into this grumpy <laughs> cynical little punk but like i mean is there a break-in period with a rider just like a bike um i think the uh you know, when, when you're building that relationship, it's either going to work or it's not. I mean, if there's trust there, I think uh, it's going to work. And with Ryan, when I got Ryan, I don't care what he says, he didn't know anything about a dirt bike. He was fortunate to have good bikes and get on them. And, uh, you know, he rode the lights class before I had them. And, you know, the lights class, you get to get on in the whoops and put the thing wide open and go all the way through because it'll run out of power at the end. Well, it's a different story with these. And, it was, a, it was a big learning curve and a lot of, you know, a lot of not writing time, just talking time, you know, teaching them how important testing is and um, teaching them, you know, how to set up a bike, what he's looking for. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I can't believe how far he's come. I mean, he's, he's really smart with his bike now, and, it, and I think that shows. And, He's really came around on testing. He didn't really like the used to test, and he'd complain about it, this and that. Now he's, when we go testing, he's the last guy out there. He's still out there when it's, the track's baked, and, you know, it's 5 o'clock, and everybody's came and gone, you know, since he's been there. So, I mean, I, I'm 
I'm impressed with that, but I think, you know, he trusts me and, and, and I trust him. And with us, you know, he, we can say anything to each other. It doesn't matter whether it's motocross or we're talking about you or whatever. We're honest about it and whether we like it or not, you know, I can tell him stuff he's not going to like and, you know, but we deal with it. And, uh, I mean, the trust, the trust thing is, it's either there or not, you know what I mean? He, he believes me and, and I believe in him, so I think it works. Um, so your job, you're doing a lot more than just replacing parts and everything. You, you have to know your rider's riding style, tell them something's not working for them by watching them. How hard was that? Um, I think just, just learning Ryan in the beginning, you know, his style and, and what he needs, you know? And, and fortunately enough, he's, he's, I wouldn't say he's similar to James, but there's a lot of stuff that is kind of set up towards that, but you know, it's, it's in a better direction for us now. Um, he didn't really know what he needed at first. I mean, the, his first year in Supercross, he was jumping the triples in first gear. I mean, I'm not kidding. He first and second gear, he, that's what he used like in 2009. Like he, it was really, he didn't understand the bike, you know, how the taller gears worked and freed up the bike and you know there was there was a lot to go so uh i think now we have an understanding that when there's something on the track he's usually pretty good about you know maybe we see something and say oh the bike's doing this he goes no 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 no, that's me he'll admit when it's him and then there's sometimes when i tell him no it's you it's not the bike you need to do this or do the bike and he can take it though and he'll accept that challenge you know we had a we had at this last race last weekend at mount morris we're looking at you know the segment times and, and looking at the data from the first moto, and he was losing a second almost in like one corner, you know. And and I went in there and I you know I was kind of mad about. It. I said, Are you serious? Like, and he's just laughing. I said, Well, what are you doing? Like, it's this is not the bike. This is you. You look at how consistent you lost this a second, and it's it's a hundred you know yards or whatever. And you know he kind of laughed it off. And then the next moto, you know, of course we check the data and check everything, and he. He fixed it. Like I mean, he was probably a second faster that time. So, it's. I mean, it's good. He he accepts when when he's messing up, and uh, you know we'll we'll accept it when it when it's our turn. How has uh, the advent of four strokes changed your job? Uh, I mean, the four stroke. It's it's a lot of work. I just you know I think it's good. I think it's been good for the sport. You know. Um, it's just progressing the sport and letting these guys do things that you'd never think they'd do on a motorcycle. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's any different than like the Air Fork, you know? I think it's another progression of the sport and people are against it in the beginning, but it is the future and, it, and it's starting to come around and, you know, we, it works great for us and I think the four stroke's been great for us. So, I mean, I, I really like it. Okay. How long ago? Uh, you how old are you, like 29? 29? How old are you? Me, I'm 36. Okay, you're 36. You have a two-year-old on the drive. How long can you keep this mechanic uh, career up and traveling and all that? Um, I don't know. I, I get asked that a lot lately. Um, we'll see. You know, Ryan's got a couple more years on his contract. I'm sure he'd be pissed if I decided to get out any sooner than that. So I think for the next couple of years, uh, I'll be doing it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll look into something else after that. I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, kind of... The way that it's gone for me, you know, in my career, I, I didn't start out working with like championship riders, you know what I mean? It kind of started, you know, from the bottom up. It was like, okay, can we make the night show? And then, oh, can we, we made the night show. Can we, can we make that out of the heat race, you know, or to the main? And, and then finally, you know, had a rider that do that. And then it was like, oh, can we get a, you know, top 10? And it, it slowly really went like that. It, it wasn't like all of a sudden I just, oh, I got a, a winning rider, you know what I mean? It was it kind of was like a 10th, and then it was a seventh place guy, and then it was a top five guy, you know, and then, you know, working with James, won, won some races. Um, and then with Ryan in the beginning, it wasn't, it wasn't all pretty. I mean, he, he wasn't ready for this class and this and that. It, it took some work. It was like not starting over, but you knew you had the guy. We just needed to get all the pieces of the puzzle together, and you know, on the training side and the bike side and the testing side, and, and now that we have everything, you know, it's, it's been going good. So. As long as the winning's coming, I mean, I, I, I would love to keep doing it, but um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's a tough question. When you were 14 and doing trackside support, did you ever dream you'd be in this position? 
Um, no, I never thought it, it would come this far, but I knew I wanted it, and I never stopped wanting it. I knew I wanted to be, you know, just be on a factory team, you know what I mean? Like, that was the, the, big, the first goal. You know, I remember looking at guys like, you know, Ron Heaton and Brian Lunas and looking up to all those guys just like, man, you know, Dan Bentley, guys like that, and just go, man, they have it. They, that's what I want to do, you know? Uh, I'm not sure that's what I should have done, but, you know, I, uh, I ended up getting here and, you know, getting to work with all those guys. Actually, Heaven was one of my team managers at KTM, and I worked with Dan Bentley at, at Honda when I was at FMF Honda. And uh, so to work with some of those guys that I used to look up to, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you guys test like crazy stuff that like the average guy doesn't think about. Like even as a mechanic and a former rider yourself, do you hear about the times that you guys are testing like bolt density thicknesses and stuff? I mean, the small things that make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, I think the competition's so close these days. Um, you can't leave any stone unturned. You you need to try stuff, and um, the stuff we've learned over the years, there there is a difference, you know, in skid plate material or, you know, uh, pinch bolts for the triple clamps, and, and it, it's feeling for these guys, and if you have a guy that's sensitive enough, to feel, sensitive enough to feel it, it's worth testing. I mean, it's just work. We're going to work no matter what, so why not do this, you know, instead of cleaning the shop or something, you know? So um, some of the stuff is crazy what we test, but if we don't test it, we'll never know. So I feel like our testing program is pretty solid, and we've, we've been good the last you know, five years with our, with our testing, and uh, it's helped us. I think it's a big advantage for us, you know. Um, it's tough. Testing and racing is completely different. I mean, as we, as we learned this year, you know, coming in with our air fork, we, always, we thought we were good, you know, at Anaheim coming in, but like when Ryan rides, it's, it's like a whole other guy. He, he pushes it so much harder. Okay, we're off. So it took us a couple weeks to get it together, but um, once we raced, and sometimes we test at the race, which we don't like to do, but sometimes we do, um, and it helps us out. It just, like I said, it's just making the team better, Ryan better, the sport better, and uh, I don't know, I, I enjoy it.